uh, was signed um, today basically is, uh, is an agreement uh, with uh, uh, um, Gambia National Petroleum Corporation, what is called a joint operating agreement. Uh, going back to the BP deal, the licenses, under that license, the government of the Gambia has a 15% stake in the block, meaning that uh, any time oil is discovered and oil is being exploited, the government of the Gambia is entitled to 15%. Of, uh, of the oil. But uh, that's not just, uh, I know people would think that that's all government gets. That's basically the government's participation, um, participating interest. But the government gets revenues from taxes, from royalties, from, uh, uh, from surface rent. Uh, we will talk about that later. But just to give you how the deal is structured, because it's the government entering into a contract with a private company. And then in that agreement, uh, the government is saying that we want to be a part of, uh, of the license. By, by that, it encourages technology transfer. So because the government has 15% in the block, then basically there's a need to establish a relationship between uh, BP and the government. But the, the issue there is the government is the regulator of the oil and gas industry. So the government cannot be a regulator and at the same time also be a licensee. That is what informed the idea that government should give its 15% to Gambia National Petroleum Corporation. And generally most uh, countries that have uh, oil resources, they have an, um, a national oil company that participate as part of a company uh, that partners with the foreign company. So basically that's how uh, that deal is structured. Now because now you have a relationship between GNPC and BP and every relationship need to be regulated whether it's, whether it's whether by, by a relationship of marriage, whether it's a relationship of entering into business, a partnership or company, there are always rules that govern the relationship between, between the parties. When two parties enter into anything, there are bound to be dispute. There, are, there is bound to be uh, who has more rights than the other. And uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's a huge business, then there is, uh, there is always need to regulate the relationship of the parties. That's why you had the agreement being called a joint operating agreement, meaning that the operations in the block A1 is, would be conducted by GNPC and BP as well. So the joint operating agreement facilitates that relationship. It defines the rights and liabilities of GNPC as a partner and also uh, with BP. That's uh, uh, the joint operating agreement. That's how it works. That is its main reason to ensure that two, two parties that have diverse interests, uh, actually opposing interests we might, we might say, uh, basically to ensure that they work in harmony. It's only when they work in harmony that you'll be able to basically um, derive um, the benefits of, 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 uh, of, their, of their cooperation, of, of, uh, of coming together. So the joint operating agreement is a huge legal document that defines the respective rights and liabilities of the party to ensure that there is no there is not going to be any any dispute between them. Let's just look at oil operations as a, as a venture. We assume that in block A1 offshore there is oil there. We are all praying for that. Uh, and the seismic data is pointing to that um, direction. And the reason why you've seen the influx of oil companies into the Gambia was based on the discoveries in Senegal. Because our blocks are adjacent to the discovery that was made in Senegal, the um, Samo one. Basically, it's, up, it's adjacent. So from a geological point of view, there is a likelihood that there is also oil in the other side, that is in the Gambia as well. So that is what led to uh, basically the, um, the, um, the influx of these oil companies. Now let's just assume that, like you've seen also the estimates that have been given, like Block A1 has the potential of having more than one billion barrel of, of oil there. Now the question is now, how then do you get that million barrel of oil there and monetize it? We've already discussed earlier that the government do not have the resources. This is tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars for the investment, it's offshore. Offshore investment is very expensive. O offshore investment is 
very expensive, it would run into hundreds of billions. You, we all know that the government do not have that kind of resource. And secondly as well, because it is offshore, the technology need, needed, it's also very expensive and also it's, it's, it's difficult to come by. Only the oil companies have that kind of um, technology. And that's why everywhere you go, with the exception of the um, Saudis, uh, you have the oil companies partnering, partnering with, um, with, uh, with the host country. Now, in that relationship, the parties, the, um, the seismic um, study may be able to estimate the amount of oil that is, um, that is there. And by that now, you'll be able to enter that information into a financial modeling, and then you will know like how much that, that oil, that one billion barrel would, would, would worth after it is extracted. All of it is extracted within a period of 20 to 30 years. And from there now, you'll be able to tell like how much the government would make during all that year from taxes, from royalties, we, we, we are going to break down these, um, these, um, these components from surface rent, from windfall taxes, and, uh, and also from other payments as well that um, the contractor, uh, that basically the oil company makes to the, the government. So royalties is payable whether profit is made or not. From the first, from, from the first barrel that is lifted, royalty be, royalties become payable. And when the, when the, the project becomes uh, profitable, then basically you pay, the company also pay t taxes as well. That is corporate income tax because it is a corporation that is uh, uh, basically incorporated in the Gambia and it's required to pay, pay taxes as well. So it, it pays it, it it pays taxes, which may run into billions, if not hundreds of billions as well, and also they also pay what is referred to as surface rent as well. That is because uh, the block they occupy in belongs to the government of the Gambia. So as they occupy it, they pay rent for it. So just like you allow someone um, 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 to reside in your in um, in your property, the person pays rent. So they pay surface rent as well. And then also they pay um, development levy, they pay environmental fees as well. So there are a lot of payments. So these bits of payments, when they are put together, and also together with how much government will be, ta will be taking from its separate 15% as, uh, um, as an investor, basically uh, it, the government takes more than uh, uh, the oil company. Uh, from, the, from the financial modeling, the government takes from around 65 to 70 percent of the projected proceeds of, of, uh, of the project.